Hey y'all, Billy from Perper Pastures Farm. If you haven't checked it out yet, then you need to. The ball in this podcast out there called the Permaculture Pimpcast. You'll find it down below. All right. As usual, every time we start to film, and it's not just me, it's like every other person that produces content, as soon as they start to film, birds start going crazy. Every time. Yeah, they just want some of the attention, I guess. Okay. Today marks 12 weeks for these meat birds in this system, the chicken tractor on steroids. And if you want all the reasons, we've talked about it over and over and over. If you want all the reasons why this is without a doubt the best chicken, egg, meat composting system on the planet, well, we make a pretty good case for it all the different times we've done it. So here we are week 12. We could go ahead and process these guys and gals at this point, but do I want to? That's the real question. So what do I need more of? Meat, eggs, compost? It's up for you to decide. So if we wanted, let's say this was a laying system, it could go absolutely indefinitely. Let's say it's meat birds. Well, there's gonna hit a point where you're definitely gonna to wanna to process them, so it's gonna to come to an end. Or maybe it's a system where it's a combination of both, where you extract meat out of there when you need it. Maybe it's a laying system also, where you get eggs every single day, and then, of course, the cubic yard of compost, or one and a half cubic yards of compost, which is basically the byproduct of this system, is produced every week. Now, up to this point, we have seven and a half, I believe it's seven cubic yards of compost that they've produced so far. Let's go down and take a look at it. We're going to show you some of the variations of what we're going to do with it. Just so you know, this, is, this isn't one and a half cubic yards. We've been using it for a little bit. And then the two previous ones we put inside the uh, high tunnel to uh, make up for that bagged soil that we made a mistake using before. But it looks like it's working out. So let's go down here and show you what we're going to do with these others. All right, so these are the piles that have turned on the outside. Now this week, you, you may not have seen that part of it. The fence, the, um, the electrified fence, it was actually sitting up here. William and Michelle already moved it down there. And this is compulsory at this point. All it does is move every single week. This system is off and singing. So can you think of a better system to use at a time when things are as wonky as they are? Well, here we are, finished compost pile right here. Here's last week's finished compost pile over here. There is, if you're not gonna use them right off, you wanna make sure you cover them up. It's gonna dry out, it's gonna do all those things but we can even refine it a little bit more if we want to. So what we're gonna do is take that pile, combine it with that pile, put them right here in the center, add a little water, we're gonna throw a tarp on it, and then it'll break down a tiny bit more until we wanna use it again. But look, y'all, I'm here to tell you, that is legit compost, so is this. And you can see by the subsequent piles down there that they're equally so. So we're gonna just go ahead. Look, I cannot convey the the profound value of a system like this at a time in america where we don't even know how we're going to feed our animals much less ourselves so we're going to focus more and more and more on why this thing is what you ought to consider and whether you have whether you're able-bodied or whether you're struggling you might be able to get a gang of people to help you out with this because we can and we do do it by ourselves all the time all right with that said we're going to go down here do what we always do. We're gonna move that chicken tractor, let them out. You can see the size of them, and then we'll go ahead and drive on like we normally do. Well, these guys were perfectly content before now working on the old piles, but they have something of a Pavlovian res response every time they see that yellow bucket. Now, Michelle 
is grabbing out of the wheelbarrow this stuff here, the, all these vines, these sweet potato vines and stuff that William got from up the uh, high tunnel. We also have some comfrey in there. And uh, I think he was trying to make something of a silage thing with it. Now, just be, look, if you didn't see that other video, you wanna make absolutely sure when you stick vines or anything this viney in here, you wanna make sure they're chopped up. Because I promise you, when you go to flip that pile, it is going to be a flipping nightmare. So when you do that, lay that sort of thing down first. And now, we'll just put the food on top and then it's off to the races. These guys know what time it is. All right, y'all, so everything has been flipped and it's always cool when you see the progression of how the composting process works. This one's broke down pretty good. In a week, at this time next week, it will be officially compost. You can see that one broken down a little bit less and then that one we just flipped even less. Okay, there was a lot of little hidden things that went on in this video that's gonna be revealed hopefully in the next video. You're gonna wanna see it because we got some magic hiding inside that pile down there and we'll expose what that is here a little bit later. All right, now that this part is done, we got this stuff up here. We got these two piles. We can leave them alone, but we don't need them right now. So we can go ahead and break them down a little bit more. So we'll take what's, what little bit is left of those uh, greens that came from the sweet potatoes. We'll just situate them in there, put those piles together, add a little bit of moisture, a little bit of air, and now it's gonna break down even more. How cool is that, y'all? All right, that's a wrap, y'all. This is about three cubic yards. It's kind of spread out a little bit. You want to try to make it more of a conical kind of look because it's going to help maintain the heat. But at this point, this is finished composting. It looks magnificent. And um, so now we're going to tarp it. We got a little bit of moisture in there. It'll break down a little bit more. But right now, this stuff is a cat's meow. Now let's just kind of come full circle right now. We're at the 12 week mark. We can process these birds if we wanted, we could, but I need compost more than I need meat right now. This stuff is life. That's why maybe in the videos you see me getting the very little bits of this stuff and throwing it up in there. Just like Jeff Lawton says, you worked extraordinarily hard to get this stuff. I'm not leaving anything behind. No soldiers left behind. And I'm talking in terms of microbes in this case. So we're gonna try to get them all. Wow, look at that. Cool, another little worm rolling around in there. That's a good sign. So we'll put him back in there, give him a good home. All right, so once again, over and over and over, we're showing how this system can really produce all of your needs. I mean, this is this could take care of your vegetable production. You got egg production in, the, in there. If you had a bunch of dual purpose birds, you could take some of the older ones out or the ones that aren't productive hatch out some more, introduce them into it. It can be a never ending cycle. Think about that. Think about that. Using all materials that don't cost you anything. And then now it's getting in the fall where we can start using leaves in this system, which we'll do. But honestly, take, take all of this thing in its totality and can you think of a system that is better suited for the signs of the times? And because we don't feed them anything, because I'm not on the hook, for any cost in terms of their feed, I can let them run indefinitely. So it's not a big deal if I have meat birds, let's say I were gonna sell them, it's not a big deal if I let them go out a little bit longer. So that's the beauty of a system like this, y'all. So think about 
Think about a system like this and all the others that we've been teaching because if you if you choose to look at it, there's really been a, compo a component of preparedness in just about every piece of everything we do. How cool is that? All right, y'all, you need comfort. You know the stuff we threw in that cage down there? We sell the roots, you can find it at the website. It's getting about that time of year where we're gonna be sticking bone sauce on these trees and it's better to do it in the fall when all the leaves are off of it. So we got that too at the website, Comfrey Sav, which Michelle's over there right now, picking up a bunch of comfrey leaves. We're getting to the point where we're probably gonna run out of being able to make that stuff because we don't have leaves. So anything you need from us, check out the description box down below. Remember, check us out at the Permaculture Pimp Cast. Leave a review because it's the hottest thing out there, y'all. Till next time, this is Billy from Permapastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. Right here's the reasons why, y'all. We'll see you next time.